The A10 Mini, the A10 Mini Pro, the ISO, whichever one you've got, they're an incredibly powerful live streaming and recording tool. But one of the features that it is missing is a way of playing out pre-recorded videos. And we're gonna fix that today. I'm gonna to show you how to use OBS Studio as an incredibly powerful way of bringing in videos, stills, pretty much any media source to your A10 Mini, and then playing that out on your live streams, recordings, whatever, all very easy to do, and at a touch of a button, just like this. The first thing you're gonna to need to do is download a copy of OBS Studio, the link is on screen now. It's available for both Mac and PC, and it's free, so it's definitely worth having. It's a great piece of software. I've got a fresh version of the latest OBS version 26 here, and I'm gonna show you the basics of setting it up, I'm not going to give you a full tutorial of how to set up OBS in general, I'm just going to show you the parts that you need for this video. So when it opens, it will look a little something like this. You're going to want to, first of all, jump over into the settings. And we're going to go to the video tab, and we're going to set that to the same settings that we have set our ATEM to. So for most people, it'll be 1080p unless you're working in 720. And set both the base canvas and the output resolution to 1920 by 1080 then under the common FPS value, just set that to the frame rate that you have your ATEM set to. So for me, it's 50, but you could be working in 25, 30, or 60 as well. Then hit apply on those. We don't need any more settings for now. Um, so we can click OK, but we will come back and change some others in a bit. Now the way that AT the um, OBS works is these scenes, you're basically gonna, we're gonna create a bunch of scenes for all the different VTs or, or videos that we want to play out or any other assets like images. So I'm, I wanna play out two videos during my show, let's say. So this first one, I'm just gonna call this, I'm gonna cl right click and rename it. And I'm gonna call this video because it's about the ATEM ISO, I'm just gonna call it VT ISO. And that's just the name for the scene. To then add that video that we want played out in, We'll just hit the plus button here under the sources menu, hit the plus button and we'll go to media source. You get a whole list of things that you can add in, but a media source is basically a video file. Now we have to give it a name that is different to the scene. So I'm just gonna call this ISO for now. Click okay and it will then allow us to select the video that we want to load in, which is this first one here for me. There's a few options that we can select here. If we want the video to loop automatically, we can tick that. Uh, I always leave restart playback when source becomes active as on. It means when we cut to the source, it will automatically start from the beginning of the video. And one thing that I do untick here is show nothing when playback ends. The reason I untick that is because if it, we continued with it ticked, once the video reached the end, it would just cut to a black screen. What I actually want it to do, and by unticking it, it will freeze on the last frame. So once I've done that, I can just hit OK. We'll see the video starts to play here in the preview at the top. Now, one of the new things in OBS version 26, as you'll see here, when we select a source, we get quite nicely a little playhead and a play bar, and it shows us at the end here how far into the video we are. So it shows 17 seconds done and six minutes left to go. That's really helpful, um, especially for any technical directors or vision mixers you can see now how long left is left of a VT. It's also good if you're working with presenters as you can tell them in their ear how long until it comes back to them. So that's a new addition in the new version of OBS. So uh, we've got our first video in and we're gonna add in the second video here, which is a video about networking. So I'm gonna put VT networking. And we're gonna do exactly the same thing. Although in this case, what you can actually do is actually just drag the file in. I wanted to show you how to add it properly, but I've just selected and dragged it and it will do all of that for us. We still need to double click and go and change those settings that we don't want, but it's just an easier way of getting the file into OBS. Okay, so now we've got our videos in OBS and we can click on each one and they automatically start playing, which is exactly what we want them to do. But how do we now get these into our A10 Mini Pro as an input? That's what I'm gonna show you to do that you first of all have to plug in, whether you're using Mac or PC, you need to plug in via an HDMI cable from your Mac or PC to the A10 Mini Pro, one of the input sources on the back. Um, so I'm just using an HDMI cable with a little dongle on the end into my MacBook Pro. When you do that, you get a few options. So if I go here to the main preview window in OBS, right click 
and you can either choose to do full screen projector and then you can see the Blackmagic device HDMI appears there or you can do a window projector and that will create another window and you can simply drag that over like you would drag so if I switch over now you can see that there and we can then make that full screen and then I'll just remove my cursor and you can see how that works. Um, but what I'm going to do actually for this one is just choose the full full screen option. So let's get rid of this window and then right click and click full screen projector, Blackmagic HDMI. And then if I, again, if I switch over, you can see it's there ready to go. And that's how we get the vision in. Getting the audio in and, and in sync is, is uh, slightly more complicated, but still really easy to do. So this is the part where a lot of people get stuck on. What you're going to need to do firstly is go to settings here, go to the audio tab, and then go down to where it says advanced and monitoring device. And you're going to choose that as the same device that you're sending the vision down. So it's the Blackmagic device HDMI. And you're going to hit apply and then OK. Now for some people at this point, you might need to restart OBS. Um, there seems to be a bug that this, even though you click apply, it doesn't always take. So for safety, I'm just going to close my OBS, click exit, exit here, and then open it back up. And the final thing you need to do for each VT that you add in, you need to, over on the audio mixer, click the little cog here, go to advanced audio properties, and then make sure that monitor and output is selected. Both of those, monitor and output. And you do that for each VT. So if I go to VT networking as well, we'll just press pause on there. Uh, oh, wrong one. We want to click the cog, then go to advanced output properties. And uh, if you have it on monitor off, you won't get the sound being transferred to the ATEM. It needs to be on monitor and output, or if you, you can, if you want, you can have it on monitor only, but I just choose monitor and output. So now with that set up, both the audio and vision are being sent down the HDMI to the A10 Mini Pro or the A10 Mini Pro ISO, whatever version you've got, and, the, and it's in sync as well. And then there's one more tip that I'm gonna ha have here. I like to have a, um, a scene that is just blank or has a holding slate on, just an image. So I'm gonna add a scene that just says uh, blank and click OK. That's an empty scene, I'll drag that to the top. If you wanna make these a little easier to click, um, you can right click here in the scenes mode and go to grid view and then this will give you more buttons. In my one-to-one -one sessions, I actually talk about how to link this all together with the ATEM and things like the Stream Deck so that you can press one button that does everything. My actual setup, I have one button that will start the VT, automatically cut to that VT on the ATEM, wait the correct amount of time to the end of the VT and then automatically transition back to the presenter's camera. So this camera that you're seeing me on right now, all at the touch of one button on something like a Stream Deck or an iPad or something like that. So it makes it all autonomous. If you want to know how to do that, uh, my email address is in the about section of my YouTube channel. I'll put it on screen now as well for anyone because um, I do all these one-to-one -one sessions showing you how to do all the more advanced stuff than what I'm talking about right now. So let's go back. We've got the black screen now on here. I'm going to go back into list view because I just prefer that. And now if I cut over to camera one, which is my input from OBS here, you can see when I click on VTI, so there's a new A10 Mini in town. There we go. You're joking. Not another one? Yeah, Blackmagic have just announced the A10. And when I cut back, there I am. Now at the moment, if I go into my A10 settings here, I'm just going to press pause. If I go into my A10 settings here and go into audio, I have audio follow video on, which you can see here, I've got this AFV. So it means whenever I cut over to that input number one that OBS is outputting to, the audio will be enabled. But if I was then to cut away from it, the audio would automatically be brought down. I prefer that there's, unless there's no real reason that what I would ever want to be me on camera, but hear, hear the audio from the VT. So it's just a bit of a safety that I have on, but if you want to, it's up to you. You can just have that channel on at all times. But I personally leave it on audio follow video. So again, as I say, what it allows me to do is I can 
now when I want to play in a VT, I can very easily just say, okay, now let's uh, watch my networking video that I put up on YouTube a few weeks ago. In today's video, I'm going to show you the two main methods for connecting and controlling your A10 Mini or A10 Mini And then Pro. I can come back to me really quickly. Um, and you can add as many of these VTs in OBS as you want. So you could have, you know, like a list of 10 or 20, and it's really easy to play them and jump jump to them. And as I say, when they get to the end, so what I'll do is I'll just fast forward on to the end of a VT. We've got one second left, and it's gonna hold on that last frame, which will then give you time to transition back over to your camera. It's not gonna just disappear, which is great. Now, the great thing about OBS is it's all layers based and it's actually a really powerful tool. So there's nothing stopping you creating really complex compositions. So for example, like we've just filled the frame with one video here, but if we create a new one, which is maybe picture in picture, I could bring those two videos in on the same frame. It's going to be a nightmare for audio, but this is just a bit of a visual representation for you. So you can see I've dragged two videos on top of each other. I'm just going to bring one in and resize it, bring another one in and resize it, drag it over here. I could add a background and things like that if I wanted to. And then when I'm ready, bang, I can cue that up to the A10 Mini Pro. So you can really compose some, some very powerful shots with OBS and then bring those into the A10 Mini or the A10 Mini Pro, whichever one you've got. I briefly mentioned before how you can then take this setup that we've just done and make it even more powerful. And I wanna show that to you now because this is what I use for my live streams. I actually either use a Stream Deck or uh, an iPad. And you can see here, hopefully if it focus, I've got all my buttons that trigger things on my iPad here. And I've created one for these VTs. Now I'm gonna show you how it works because when I click this VT1 button, it's gonna do multiple things. It's going to um, start playing the VT in OBS and then it's going to automatically bring on that VT in the ATEM. It knows how long that VT is, so it's gonna wait and then as the VT is coming to an end, it's gonna fade me back on all at the push of one button wirelessly on an iPad. Let's give it a go. I recorded a quick video for me to play in now. Hey everyone, so this is woo, a pre-recorded video. I'm just shooting on my iPhone as an example, and I'm gonna make it 10 seconds long so that it cuts back to me now. You can see how powerful a tool like that is, especially if you're a one-man band and you, you need to be doing everything yourself. Just being able to push one button and it does the whole VT play out for you is super powerful. Um, as I say, I'm not gonna cover how to do that part in this video, but if you do wanna know, shoot me an email. My email address is on the about me section. I'll put it also in the description below um, because I do do one-to-one -one consulting sessions and this is the type of stuff, the more advanced stuff that I, I, I talk about and um, teach people how to do in those sessions. So if you wanna know how to do that sort of stuff, just shoot me a mail. I hope you found this video useful. If you're new here and never seen one of my videos before, hit the subscribe button because this is exactly the type of stuff that I upload teaching you how to get the most out of your broadcast equipment. And we've got some really cool stuff and really cool reviews coming up on the channel soon. But if you found this video useful, give it a like. Let me know in the comments below if you're gonna try this out or if you already have tried it out, let me know what you thought of it. And once you've done all that, I'll see you on the next one.